since we talked, I'm feeling swell. Look at the two of us here in Sanctuary. Prepared for the future. Hey folks, Dave here, and welcome back to part two of my new Sanctuary Hills Fallout 4 settlement build. This is the new capital that I have created for my Minutemen Empire. If you missed out on part one, you might be a bit lost, so go ahead and hit the link in the description or the card on the screen to go back and watch part one and get all caught up, and then continue here with part two. Let's go ahead and dive back in where Joel and I will be touring the marketplace here at Sanctuary up next. The public market here is designed like a flea market and has everything that a new settler needs to make a home out of Sanctuary Hills. You got some scrap here, and a reminder that if you salvage scrap, you can crush our enemies. Or just rebuild your house. <laughs> so, that was so hardcore. <laughs> There's some uh, pre-made looted gravestones you can buy for when your uh, family moves on to join the Great Sanctuary Hills Graveyard. Were those made or were those stolen? From other graveyards. <laughs> Stolen. <laughs> They've been flipped around and re-chiseled. <laughs> for efficiency. West Side Co-op. Ooh. West Side Co-op. This is our outdoor market. Where you can buy fresh produce or some new Coca-Colas to take home with you. Or some books to decorate your new, uh, almost pre-war style bookshelves. I'm big into books in this settlement. It's like, a, it's like a symbol of prosperity in the Commonwealth, basically. If you're buying books instead of just food and ammo... I mean, that's how it was in the old days, wasn't it? Yeah. Like, if you had a lot of... If, especially if you, like during early printing presses, like, so everything was so expensive. Like, if you had a book, it was... Yeah. You had money. And General Dave is rich. <laughs> <laughs> All those taxes, man. <laughs> and there are taxes. Oh, boy, there are taxes. You also got all the gardening supplies you might need. You've got hoses, some flamingos for decoration. Here at uh, Commonwealth Farm Supplies, all those new picket fences out front of all the houses, you can add on to it, extend your yard, if you have the right permits. I was, I was just <laughs> gonna say, I feel like the civilians don't really have access to design what they want. It's kinda like everything has to be approved. Get your permit, then buy your fences, which are taxed. <laughs> Dave, I feel like you need to have one episode of this that's just General Dave's office. That's it. You don't leave the office, and it's just every document of how you tax your people. I just like a PowerPoint slide. Yeah, I just want to see yeah. that. I would love to see that. It's like, oh, okay. Oh, those are cool. Yeah, I love these old advertisements here. Uh, this one's Cram. It's fantastic. It's like a photoshopped old spam ad. <laughs> cram. <laughs> cram. Cram, 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 cram. <laughs> Maid's night out. What shall we eat? Cram. <laughs> <laughs> wow, screw you guys. <laughs> Nuka Cola ad. Bits of uh, wood chips for working on your garden there. Some shims, it looks like. Inside here, we have even more fresh produce. Ready to be bought. Bake sale Friday. Fight the Red Menace with cookies. Did you make that? It's from the game, actually. Really? There's a school that has it, yeah. That, I, that's awesome. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> With cookies. Tons of fresh produce and workshop supplies and alcohol. Basically, even some uh, components for building and crafting. Everything that you might need for your new life here in Sanctuary is available at the West Side Co-op. And when I say everything, I do mean everything. Let's go on inside to the central part of the market, our indoor flea market, which I just, is. I'm sorry, I just I just had a picture of like a kid selling lemonade on the stand. You come by like, you didn't get a pre-approval of this, and the mother's like, you like take a sip of it, and it's like not good. She's like praying, like, no. <laughs> not the gulags. <laughs> it's like taxing a little kid, but I just want to sell for a couple caps, and taxed. <laughs> yes, that's correct. <laughs> During the daytime, the market is primarily run by Codsworth, who is very happy that the streets of Sanctuary are finally looking clean again. Basically, Codsworth is quite happy about the current state of Sanctuary scene. It was such a mess, and he was trying to maintain it all by himself before you came out of the vault. 
As Joel already noticed to the left, I am finally answering a question that you guys have tried to call me out on multiple times about my paintings. Where did all these paintings come from? All these paintings in these settlements? Well, thanks to that crazy vault tech dude who I have hired to return to Sanctuary Hills, uh, he is now running the Sanctuary Hills painting store. <laughs> because as an expert, as an expert in the area before the war, he knows where to go for Is all... Is that guy actually still alive in the game? Yes. He's what actually was, just down was? the street. We're going to meet him in just a little oh, bit. Oh, in yours. I was like, in the actual game, was he alive? Yes. Yes, he really? was. Yeah. You can meet him in Good Neighbor, actually. Oh, I don't remember that. <laughs> I told him to go back to Sanctuary. He probably arrived like, what the heck is all this? <laughs> this was a crap hole last time I left it. <laughs> so yeah, guys, this is where all of the paintings in my settlements come from. Mr. vault Tech, dude, I don't actually know his name. That's kind of sad, isn't it? Uh, he's familiar with the Boston area. He knows perhaps underground houses, apartments, penthouses that might have undamaged or barely damaged paintings for us to loot and put up in our <laughs> leaky houses. But he only wants lighthouses, George Washington. <laughs> There's a lot of patriotic yeah. paintings. Hey, it is the Boston area, though. So yeah, it kind of yeah. fits. So that's what the vault Tech guy is up to. As you can see right now, Codsworth is manning the armor booth, where you can get some armor for trekking outside of the uh, boundaries of the settlement. Register is ready to go there. He needs some cleanup himself, it looks like. <laughs> a bit rusty. You do have a, a wide selection of armors of many types. And over here we have the gun shop, which has an emergency security gate a fun little poster there uh, obey <laughs> <laughs> when you were banned down I just say oh that's a cool robot <laughs> obey oh okay oh, it's just a joke it's just a joke it's just a joke it's but joke. obey yeah, yeah. <laughs> and kind of like modern gun selling ads even in the apocalypse you have to create a narrative is this tomorrow America under communism buy your guns and ammo now folks <laughs> Stock up before communism takes over. You gotta have that fire sale, that sense of urgency. They're coming for your guns. <laughs> bye, bye, bye. I got one guy in the middle who just looks like he's tickling the dude, but he's choking him. But he's like, ha, I got you. I think that's a woman. I can't tell. Uh, yeah, not really sure what's going on there. Yeah, you got your security gate here that is uh, available for locking it up at night with tons of weapons on display. Not as good of a selection as the official Minutemen Armory, of course. But you've got some ammo down in the display case with the spotlights on it so you can see it clearly. Maybe you have some stuff behind the counter, too. Now for the rocket launcher, you have to have your Minutemen Militia license to carry that. Uh, you have to be an actual member of the military forces. But civilians can own just about everything else. Pretty good selection. In fact, General Dave encourages the use of firearms and practicing with them so that uh, we can come together and defend the settlement. Under my orders. Defend him. <laughs> yeah, defend me. <laughs> I'm in the back. <laughs> Lots of ammo in the display cases. In the back here, we're going to have our United States Post Office, but also our clothing shop, which is the location of our washer and dryer, kind of the, for the community uh, here in Sanctuary. Something else that makes this settlement stand out, the ability to have clean clothes. For a price. <laughs> you rent the washer and dryer. It's a service fee. <laughs> it's a large service fee. It's appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> and you can also shop and pick out a couple of uh, available items, perhaps from uh, people that have gotten kicked out, maybe? Their background checks failed. And then this as you can tell from the drop-off location, is our Minuteman post office. Where you can actually mail letters and packages through our Minuteman convoys to other settlements in the Commonwealth. Question, how much is, long does it take you to line up stuff like doors? Like, I can tell that the door is literally like an inch away from that. There's a lot of back and forth adjustment. Oh, man. I go around and make sure that nothing actually collides along the way. It takes a long time long time and some uh, paper and pencils for writing your letters to your loved ones at 
Diamond City, for example, <laughs> if they can't afford to live in sanctuary. I like the teddy bear pencil. I imagine that telephone is like a direct line maybe to a, the castle or like one or two other big settlements, maybe. Like you have some really rough just telephone lines strung along. That is our almost flea market style indoor mall. Plenty of things to buy if you have the caps. Also, don't wait for the draft. Volunteer. <laughs> Recruitment center, down the street. <laughs> if you wait, you're in prison. <laughs> and if you wait, you now <laughs> front, lines. Front, line. yeah, front, front lines. Front lines. Immediately front lines. <laughs> Let's go ahead and cut our lights back off there. We're going to head on down the street. Shall we zoom out, Joel, and take a look at where we are? I mean, it's still Sanctuary, but there's been a lot added to it. You want to take a look? I, well, I kind of like this a little bit more surprise because I almost like because okay. I kind of forget seeing that. Okay. What I saw because I it was too much to take over, take in. Continue the tour. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Um, next up, across from the uh, I guess next to the Patriot Tavern, we have Housing Unit D. C is actually down the street. <laughs> so government official, you live in Building D. I mean, oh. we're we rebuilding these, and also if you'll notice, Joel. Besides all of the repaired sidewalks with the lack of... Well, there's one of our guards there. Besides all the repaired sidewalks and streets with no more piles of crap and giant crappy bushes everywhere, the houses have been painted up a bit and repaired. There's no more holes in the rooftops. You notice that? We're actually using refurbished materials to restore the houses. So this one is actually under current refurbishment, so we're not going to tour the whole thing, but you can see we've got our pipelines keeping our trees alive. Our population happy. <laughs> We're just gonna duck right in the front door here for a second. Got our nice entranceway for this house, which again is under remodeling, so we're not gonna tour the full house. Extra lantern by the door, I need to go. And a nice wreath right there. Some of our original companions are out here. Working Did you away. redo all of this? This was the original workshop, kind of this section right here. And I expanded onto it, and this is now our main workshop for the settlement for working on a number of things to keep things running. Sleeping there. <laughs> uh, why did I choose building D? <laughs> <laughs> it's not high on the list. <laughs> it's so funny because if I were building this, I would have made all the building names like almost like beach house names, you know, like, you know, like, you know, just like sectional D, you know, <laughs> I live in that area. Well, it makes the paperwork easier and boy is there paperwork. <laughs> It's got to look nice in those lists and reports. <laughs> Another tool in our toolbox for building all these walls and other parts of the settlement are our use of power armor. We've got tons of power armor that's got uh, jet packs for lifting those large bits of stone. So for the major construction, as you can tell from the construction legs there, that makes we a lot do of sense. use power probably, armor. Yeah. probably do a lot. Iron Man. Space, space. So for you guys that are always asking, how are you building these giant stone structures? Well... Have you seen power armor? Because I have a lot of it. And I don't really run around in it a whole lot, so might as well use it to build things, right? We're working on repairing pre-war. Did you put the hat on that thing? Motorbike there. This is another prefab, thing. Oh, okay. Like, does it include all the, down there, the Yes, wrenches? yes, indeed. Just think, Joel, if I didn't have all these new tools in my toolbox, how long this would have taken? Got a nice clothing and armor workbench. Chemistry workbench, some extra components and parts and paints. I actually moved our original settlement workbench to be where I wanted it to. The game can never tell me no. <laughs> I am the one who knocks. <laughs> now Sturges is supposed to be working on a building that you'll see in just a little My bit. But uh, construction's on hold anything. to work on some emergency repairs at this house because he has some leaks going on. So he's uh, working on the ventilation system there for this house. Now across the street is General Dave's original pre-war house. You might remember, Joel, this little garden, which is almost unchanged from the original Fortress Sanctuary build. This was the first Minutemen statue that I ever placed in the game, so it had to stay where it was, right? For old time's sake. So this is still General Dave's kind of uh, Minutemen Memorial Garden out front of my old house, but I don't live here anymore because we needed the space. Is this a museum? <laughs> It's a museum. <laughs> I knew it it's a museum, museum for General Dave. <laughs> and it's actually a living museum. Uh, yeah. The Vault Tech dude, oh who I'm going to continue just calling him Vault Tech dude. I've 
don't know his actual name. He's actually uh, the one who lives here. He is the curator of the General Dave Museum. <laughs> and the tour guide. And the tour guide. Uh, and that's why the vault Tech van is still on the street, is so you can make it part of the tour. Uh, this is before the war. I used to work for vault Tech. Here's my old van from before the war. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Nice uh, connection there. And notice that General Dave's fences are, in fact, pristine for I the museum. I who wants to go on these tours. Joel, is this a mandatory thing? Like, welcome! Take the tour. <laughs> First of all, yes. But secondly, like, what if people? Don't, what if they don't know of you, about you? Because it's a huge area. You'll see coming up why they will know my name. <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep going. Just a brief look inside, because for the most part, uh, General Dave's Museum is an almost exact replica of my home as it was five years ago. When I first left the vault and built that original fortress sanctuary. How old is this? Summer. When did you first build this? Yeah, no, no. November 2015. Mm. So the vault tech guy is living here, but he also gives tours. It's a pretty sweet gig though because he gets a full bathroom and his own bedroom, which used to be General Day's bedroom. That's a pretty nice view right there. That's my old desk. And my old flag, which I left, so you Man, stare at it. I was freaking out about how much stuff you would put on that. Like that all that stuff there, I was like, oh my gosh, you put all those things there. Well back in the day, all that is hand placed. Like I know. I had to drop it out of the inventory and like drag it around with Yeah, the I know. Like it was really thing. impressive, but now it's kinda like, eh, it's of course. Of course you have stuff there. Now, one room that is not part of the tour is Sean's old room. I did destroy the institute, uh, spoiler alert. And there just aren't Good memories in here. Some bottle of whiskey over on the uh, baby changing table. <laughs> um, some ammo boxes and a turned over chair in General Dave's anger. So yeah, that is locked up. It is not part of the tour. It's a uh, dark part of General Dave's memories. But that is the museum. Let's go ahead and turn that light back off. Let's see, where is it? Oh, it's next to the door. I'll just have someone else come along and take care of closing all these doors that I keep leaving open. Before we keep heading down the street, let's look and see what's around back of the General's Museum. First of all, we've got a pre-war truck here that we're tinkering with trying to get back online. I imagine those atomic powered vehicles are a Is that the same nightmare. one you've been tinkering with? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say the same like, one. Still haven't fixed it. <laughs> still That's haven't not fixed priority. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, it's a bit of a nightmare. You know, atomic powered cars. Because I feel like if General Dave wants it working, it will be working. <laughs> we'll see. One day, perhaps. One day, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Doug Mead has kept his original house hanging out back at my original house. He just prefers this location. Around back of the house, though, we've got one of the crappier guard towers, as well as two grave sites for both Nora, my wife, and Sean, my son, who's technically dead. I did rescue my synth son in the main story, but he's not kept here because the memories are just uh, too painful. He's kind of General Dave's locked away secret, perhaps. We might see him in a later build. <laughs> We're gonna have like a bastard tower or something going on. Speaking of towers though, let's head over here, up the rickety stairs. Yeah, not great construction, but this was one of the original guard towers that went up not long again after that original Fortress Sanctuary tour. You see a bit of our grass has been spreading outside of the walls because we're just pumping it underground. It's kind of leaking outside Did of the you do that? Yep, all of the painting of the green grass had to be done in the creation kit with a custom mod because you can't do it in game. And then a few people had mods in the creation kit that do things like cleaning up the trash and stuff like that. All that had to be the creation kit. You can't do that in game. So this is like 30 different new mods and a few of my own all coming together to make all this possible. As we truck back around and the frame rate erodes, <laughs> welcome to the Minutemen Liberty Lodge. <laughs> Oh. This is the seat of government for Sanctuary itself. This is where the settlers come together for town hall meetings and for votes about things just here at Sanctuary. It's also like a meeting hall for, I don't know. Did you turn on the fire? 
<laughs> I think the fire just turned on. It was already on. It just lit up. So oh. okay. <laughs> yeah, this is our meeting house where we can uh, meet about things just about saying super. And outside, there's a whole stack of uh, the public occurrences produced by Piper. <laughs> Read the shards of glass. Ah, I gotta read them. You can just open the door. Oh. But come on, kids. They're... Yeah, but me. <laughs> if I was a kid, I, I wouldn't have opened it. I would have just reached through the glass. <laughs> you know, kids all about reading the newspaper. <laughs> oh, they don't got glass. video games right now, so they, that's all they got to read. Do they not have video games? Well, let's find out soon. <laughs> This is Liberty Lodge. I imagined it as almost like a old, like, Mason-style lodge. <laughs> so good. Oh, man. It's where we can come together and celebrate all kinds of holidays. This is also for, like, public apologies, too. So I feel like if someone shames anybody, like, they gotta come up here, the town come, comes together. Little uh, little Frank here has gotta, gotta apologize for his wrongdoings. <laughs> what? <laughs> so. No, no. <laughs> if, you, if you break the law during sanctuary... <laughs> <laughs> and it's not like a military violation like it's a civil violation like yeah. you marred someone's lawn or something dumb like that I you're taken before a know. town council meeting <laughs> and if they vote for a punishment you're taken after the proper paperwork is filed <laughs> damn paperwork <laughs> you're taken out here to the stocks <laughs> behind the lodge <laughs> oh man okay now I could live here so yeah, this Those is tomatoes. Yeah, yeah, tomatoes ready to go. Our garden is so productive. We're throwing tomatoes at people instead of eating them. Like that's how rich people in the sanctuary are here in the apocalypse. <laughs> I love how this. This is totally called it. I'm like actually, that's 100% what we do. <laughs> You're 100% correct. Punishment's out back. <laughs> it's like out back of the woodshed. I love how this chimney looks outside too. It even has the yeah. smokestack coming out. 100% realism there. I say. So, Liberty Lodge is a place for celebrations, but also civic punishments when necessary. And like all lodges, you have to have your animal head over the fireplace. Also, the lighting once again. Mmm. It pleases me. And our notice board Most folks for are just the announcements. All we gotta do and some all. cool lanterns hanging for the atmosphere. That still leaves upstairs, though, and boy, is there an upstairs. The upstairs is where the mayor of Sanctuary resides. Wait, who's the mayor? We'll find out here in just a second. There's an How election. are you allowing someone else to be mayor? It'll make perfect Anything sense. <laughs> oh, man. The There's an election here in Sanctuary every two years for mayor, with the uh, first election being basically an easy win for the mayor. Here's their secretary's desk for uh, taking care of appointments outside of their residence. <laughs> it was an easy win for the mayor because General Dave campaigned for them. For her, specifically. Here's our I living say, quarters. Where are we headed? You thought the, uh, the vault-style quarters were nice. This is like seriously old-world living right here. This is very cozy above the lodge. Got nice decorations, nice lighting. You've got your own radio station, some plants, more of those vault guy paintings. Thank you, sir. Even your own kitchen, if you want to make your own food. With a great view of Main Street, load. right or, there, you know, looking down to the left, and your own massive deck all to yourself. Overlooking the General's Museum, the most important view in the whole city. <laughs> this is the elite view <laughs> this is the upper class those are all the you know glad handing shaking hands oh, swapping so stories hand. the election was easy because i made sure that piper became the first mayor of sanctuary <laughs> oh nice she was with me for probably most of the main quest i think even more than nick badass Valentine. pistol yeah she is well prepared because she's been watching ranger dave's survival tips <laughs> <laughs> yeah so she's our mayor been forever and thanks to General Dave's election lunch. efforts, it's probably guaranteed that she'll be mayor for quite a few elections to come. For as long as General Dave deems No, it. no, there's a democratic <laughs> electoral process. <laughs> there is. <laughs> oh, there's an election. But when General Dave campaigns for you, you win. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go upstairs. Very well-stocked cupboard. Right there in the kitchen. 
private staircase. Ooh, maybe Another upstairs. Us, There's a lock for the sleeping quarters. As you go left here at the top of the stairs, another fantastic view. All to yourself. More different styles of guard towers all the way That's around. Cool. This is the loft bedroom. This is what everyone wants to have, but no one will get to have for a long time to come. So is this okay. Piper's? This is Piper's. Okay. All to herself, basically. Got... I can't wait to see your place. Because if this place is nice... <laughs> Honestly, I was a little jealous at first of, uh, of this loft, because I love the style of it. Like the log cabin loft style. There's even, if we go back here, past all this storage, I can do to the load. a little balcony. That looks down over that staircase that we came up down below. Oh, that's cool. Over the secretary's uh, desk. So yeah, you've got a whole bunch of different areas all to yourself up here. You can kind of sit and listen to the hubbub down below, knowing that uh, you're in charge of all that. Because General Dave made sure you're in charge of all that. <laughs> yeah, I was definitely jealous of this, because I finished this before my own quarters. And I was like, oh, this is kind of nice. I, I almost took it as my own. <laughs> I almost changed plans. Great view out the window there. Head on down. I the feel course. like that only enrages you to make your version tons better. <laughs> oh, there was rage. Designing <laughs> rage. <laughs> now, here's a happy fellow, a lucky resident of uh, Residential Housing Unit Building C. He's, uh. I can imagine you saying, like, Housing Charlie, H Housing Delta. <laughs> Gosh, nerds. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of a holdover from the original build. Someone's still enjoying cooking some stews on this side porch, as they have been for years now. I just rearranged that a bit from uh, the original build. Isn't that like the only cooking area, too, for your first build? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. Oh my gosh. You think he's the only one here? You think that would be enough for a settlement that's this big now? <laughs> no. <laughs> the answer is no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Every tree has the piping system. Oh gosh, dude. Every oh, single man. one. Now, we're just going to duck in to building C, because this is actually one of our <laughs> Dude, oldest. I counted. The last time he said we're going to duck in, it was 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, actually our, our oldest um, housing unit. This is actually a holdover from the original build for the most part. So it has this original common area. And it's not quite as fixed up and repaired as the other housing units just yet. So C is actually a bit more run down. But as you can see from some of these wall sections, we are working on repairing things and bringing it up to our current standard of Minutemen. Where do you, where do tenants pay? We will find out. Hmm. We will find out. Yeah, this is a, a more simple, slightly more rundown quarters for if you can't afford the, uh, the newer models that have been more recently repaired. General Dave will never stop fighting for you. <laughs> Just a quick reminder. Let's cut that power back off. <laughs> so much damn propaganda everywhere. And back. Your own places. Like, you probably have propaganda in your propaganda office. Back at the castle. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, you do. It's like, why is that on the wall? We get it, man. You're making it. It's like, gotta remember that even then. <laughs> You'll notice, Joel, that this looks like a town. It's a little bit scrappy, a little bit of dry grass and, you know, worn bits, but this is suburbia. Coming alive hey, once again in the apocalypse. I will put my damn propaganda wherever I want to. <laughs> because I've earned it. Because you've built this up with your own two hands, I'm sure. Actually, tons of power armor. Also, we stole synths and reprogrammed them. Basically war crimes. <laughs> <laughs> Basically a war crime. <laughs> uh, <laughs> going back along the wall, here we have one of our... Uh, graveyards for those who haven't made it this far. One of your graveyards? There's a couple. A lot of people have died protecting sanctuary. <laughs> a lot. Protecting Remember, building. <laughs> <laughs> War crimes. <laughs> both. Both. If you remember, we had a graveyard off uh, behind us a bit in the original build. A small graveyard. Uh, it has been expanded quite a bit since then to make up for the new casualties. But over here, along the wall, as you can see, it continues all the way down. There are no gaps in the wall. The entire thing is electrified, and it helps to wall in some of the backyard areas that we can actually use. 
But this is probably the oldest tower that hasn't been replaced yet, so it's mostly wooden. Lots I can imagine, like, the citizens, the younger kids, going, like, oh, that's the ghost tower. You know yeah, I mean? you know, yeah. Like, oh, I dare you to go up there at night. <laughs> My pappy worked on that tower <laughs> five years ago. It wasn't that long ago. <laughs> <No, laughs> it was it's that like, long. It, Yeah, it hasn't been that long. <laughs> you can see the curvature of the walls he goes around, completely sealed in, with the guard towers dotting every few hundred feet. There are no exceptions to safety <laughs> here at Sanctuary. <laughs> Unless you're building it. How many guard towers do you have? A lot. Each one is slightly unique, too. And occasionally you'll see guards walking back and forth. They're actually walking from tower to tower. It's hard to catch them in a tower because there's so many, but they're actually walking around patrolling between the guard towers. That's cool. These fences I actually created myself, and they're available to download on Xbox and PC as General Dave's Wasteland Wall Mod. Ooh, that's cool. I have a little top part. That's yeah, it's nice. bits of broken rebar. And uh, these longer bits down here were inspired by The Walking Dead. The, uh, what was the settlement? Uh, the newest one. Alexandria? Alexandria. They're inspired by Alexandria's walls. That's really cool, yeah. It looks more developed. Like, still kind of scrappy, but like, people actually put some thought and just didn't throw crap together to make a wall. And over here we have the Brahmin pen for all the trade that comes and goes from the settlement. This is where the Brahmin are fed and watered before they head out to hit the dusty trail once again. <laughs> it pleases me that the game actually spawned them in the stall that I created because of the Brahmin trough. Mm. I actually made sure it was lined up correctly to have him in the stall. And just some uh, workshop tools on this side. That's our, uh, our Brahmin pen right there. Now, we saw that junk village outside of town as we came in, right, Joel? The shanty town. Was that inspired by my sanctuary build? Because my first sanctuary build, I had a junk, it, junky, in a small shanty way. town. It actually okay. took inspiration from a number of things, oh. including some audience uh, requests. But I did remember your single floating scrap shack <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> over the water. So, of course, this being my main settlement, you have to pass a very thorough. Minutemen background check to get into Sanctuary Hills and actually live here. But General Dave is always thinking of those less fortunate than himself, which is everyone else. <laughs> War crimes. <laughs> Do you think, Joel, that General Dave has concerns for the, the small forgotten children of the Commonwealth? The orphans, the alone, having to survive out there in the wasteland by themselves. Do you think General Dave would forget about those poor kids out there? <laughs> That's <laughs> why, thanks to Minutemen Taxes, <laughs> General Dave has founded... General Dave's Minimum Security <laughs> Orphanarium and School! <laughs> Orphanarium? <laughs> minimum Security Orphanarium and School. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck is min What does that even mean? Minimum Security? It's actually a Futurama Easter egg. Uh, Leela grew up in a minimum security orphanarium that had like barbed wire around it. <laughs> so this is... It's basically like a jail for little kids. No, but kind of. <laughs> Again, these kids would be living out in the wasteland if it weren't for General Dave. And his minimum security orphanarium in school. <laughs> it's like a huge name, too. This is probably my favorite texture in the whole build that I made. It's just the <laughs> orphanarium in school. It started out as a joke, oh, then I'm like, I have to name it this. This is too perfect. And the turret. I'm watching over the Minimum. <laughs> minimum security. Yeah, just the one. Just the one. Some nice uh, <laughs> garden out front. Uh, Let's close our gate. Keep the kids in. <laughs> I mean, safe. Keep me in. <laughs> keep the kids in. This is where kids can grow up in safety before they join the Minutemen ranks if they're adopted by either a family or join the militia. They can learn all <laughs> I about... I love that. This is where they stay safe until they join the, the military. <laughs> like, or, or, like, could they leave if they're allowed to? No. <laughs> no. Not at all. <laughs> what in the world? Now, as you can see, not all of the orphans of the Commonwealth <laughs> are super happy about their new life. This kid is trying to break into the supply cabinet. He's... Probably not having a about... youthful haircut. Yeah, as what a he's... rebellious little kid. I feel like he probably wore some pretty like crazy looking armor when he was surviving on his own. But he's not a big fan of his new rocket ship pajamas. <laughs> so he's a little bit rebellious, but um, we'll have to we'll have to take care of some discipline problems later. And this is embarrassing for the tour. I mean, uh, General Dave will remember this. 
<laughs> they're also taught weapon safety and handling at an early age uh, because there are so many guns in the apocalypse. You want to make sure that kids can actually, you know, uh, disarm one if they need to or use it if they have to. So you're taught reassembly, cleaning, and use of firearms. Kid, I'm right here. You gotta cut that out. <laughs> this is our activity corner, which he has definitely found his activity he wants to do. Smash activity it corner. <laughs> here looks a bunch of old gray books. <laughs> Activities! <laughs> I mean, there's plenty of room for experiments. Dude, you are Sheldon. Like his fun with flags segment. Have you seen that? <laughs> General Dave's fun with flags and tips. You got some storage lockers, more fun educational materials, and some uh, survival guides. Water aerobics for ghouls. <laughs> and of course, you've got your classroom TV ready to display the latest of Ranger Dave's survival tips. <laughs> ready to go. <laughs> George Washington is like presenting. <laughs> Uh, this is so funny. Little uh, <laughs> join or die. That's what the kids are reading. <laughs> join or die. Well, we've got our classroom fridge, some nice pie <laughs> in there, and some some plates that are being washed from our classroom snack time. <laughs> With the looks of that kid, I swear, like just the word snack time probably pisses him off. Like screw you, like I kill people for meat. Uh, here in the classroom, um, our orphans and needy children of the Commonwealth are taught all about the important facts of survival in life, uh, including joining or dying. <laughs> General Dave always says, always, General Dave always, always says, says order, order is safety. safety. We're in this together. together. Trust, Trust but verify. verify. Brush your teeth every <laughs> night. Be kind to everyone, everyone you meet, <laughs> but always have a plan to take them out if you need to. <laughs> Additionally, democracy, it's not, not negotiable. negotiable. <laughs> General Dave always says. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> There's the teacher's desk there. Oh, Dave, this has been such an enjoyment seeing <laughs> you go from such a small little settlement builder with a happy plan to just help people, too. General Dave always <laughs> says. But look, Joel, they're learning the alphabet so they can read all my signs. I was line it up. It's like, General Dave. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I, does that thing General Dave says, <laughs> <Yeah>. would you kindly? <laughs> Learn the alphabet so you can read what General Dave always says. <laughs> <laughs> Here in the school, we've got plenty of storage and multiple bathrooms for the kids. We've got extra showers, extra toilets, extra sinks. Just you knowing the amount of time that I spent building bathrooms in the settlement, uh, how much that horrifies you, that pleases me. That makes it all worth it, Joel. Because <laughs> there's more. Each with posters about keeping your teeth clean. <laughs> this one's big on teeth cleaning, apparently. Oh this gosh. orphanage. You've got all kinds of sinks and toilets. Plenty of room for plenty of orphans. Eight glasses of water every day. <laughs> Across from the water fountain. <laughs> Drink it now. Eight glasses right now. Chug. Eight glasses now. And your laundry hamper. Robots are cool. And here's where the uh, the kids sleep. You got your bunk house for the orphans. You've got your uh, your fun toy chest Ugh, because robots are gross. I mean you got to have some fun, right? They're still kids. It's still got barnacles on it. <laughs> a toy horse, but also an important part of becoming a uh, Minutemen orphan <laughs> at General Dave's Orphanarium is learning your place in the settlement. The kids learn how to take care of chores to help out with the adults who are doing things like building construction, uh, defending the settlement. So a lot of the kids are doing things like clothing. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a safe place to sleep. You learn your alphabet, you learn your safety tips, you learn about guns, but there are chores because everybody has responsibilities here in Sanctuary Hills. We'll leave the orphans to their work, which includes apparently breaking into <laughs> Yeah, he's determined. He'll be in the stocks very soon. Now, who's running the orphanage? Like, who's in charge of it, right? Let's go into our playroom. Definitely not Joel. <laughs> Definitely not Joel. In the playroom, I have actually donated Sean's old crib to the orphanage. I just didn't want it in my house anymore. I just didn't want to see it. But it makes me happy knowing that it's going to good use. 
We got a racetrack for the kids to play with their cars. Plenty of games and books and Brahmin skulls. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I'm Mr. Dead Brahmin! <laughs> I had no chance. <laughs> I had no chance. <laughs> Mama Murphy is in charge of running the orphanage. Of course you would trust someone who's addicted to Jet. Now, knows her slippers there. She's definitely cozy at home. But she made me a promise a long time ago that she was done with drugs, done with the sight and all that stuff. But I quickly realized that she was still using Jet occasionally. And I later found out that as the settlement grew and the walls went up and security tightened as the drugs filter up through the ground as the drugs filter <laughs> up through the grass the fresh green grass and as the drugs begin entering the ecosystem here inside the walls I very quickly learned that Mama Murphy was Joel's contact inside of Sanctuary <laughs> she is the drug kingpin in running the orphanage here in Sanctuary Hills <laughs> that makes sense and uh, as you can see, she has her storage safe for all the drugs right here in the orphanage where she, uh, she sells them. Now, she has a problem for sure, but it's a limited problem right now. So kind of better her than some random raider reject smuggling drugs into Sanctuary. Speaking of raider rejects, what that kid's actually looking for is Mama Murphy's stash. <laughs> He's trying to find it. <laughs> He looks like someone who's addicted to it. I love the rocket pajamas with the, like, the, the mohawk haircut. So that is General Dave's Orphanarium, a way to keep kids safe in the wasteland and also get some new recruits for the Minutemen. Dude, how many more areas? Holy crap. Around back we have the play area, fenced in for the kids' safety, with some of the original playground equipment that used to be over in the main part of Sanctuary that's been moved into place so the kids can enjoy it. Some of that green grass coming up. Signs of life once again in the apocalypse. Plenty of swing sets. And also, just like the towers, as you notice, Joel, the wall has different sections as it goes around. Best wall sections are definitely the chain link and that security style. If you look as we go around, there's different parts where we haven't quite finished upgrading to that level of fence yet. And it's still a bit scrappier, but it has scaffolding where we're actually working on the fence all the way around. You could basically walk up to any point in the settlement, like what you're seeing fits into how I imagine it in my head it's been built over the last five or so years. Yet, oh, this is really cool. Yeah, another style tower with the spiral staircase from a lighthouse or some kind of coastal lookout point. Looking down over again, different wall sections as we go around the back side here. And a look at the end of the street and the orphanarium. Oh my gosh. <sighs> Time for a tea break. My throat is destroyed. Those uh, swing sets, is that actually physics based at all? I can't remember if you walk into those, if it's physics or if it just Let's hits you. Let's go find out. Kind of. There we go. Oh, cool. This bunker around back is specifically just for the orphans. It's their own survival bunker in case the walls are breached, get the kids underground. You guys have seen that before. It actually exists uh, in Sanctuary in the base game. So that's our uh, orphan survival bunker. But you asked me before, Joel, why would people want to take a tour of General Dave's old house, right? Yeah. Like, how do people know my name? I mean, besides the giant manners that say General Dave is, you know, so important. Yeah. How do people who arrive here know my name? Well, for that, let's head over to the Central Plaza, which is the home of what we're calling the Grey House, which is the location of the Minutemen's uh, contribution to the Commonwealth, the Commonwealth Provisional Government, an organization of multiple settlements, including Diamond City, for example, as well as, of course, like a thousand Minutemen settlements that are coming together and trying to reestablish democracy once again. But who led us to this point, Joel? Who pointed people in the right direction and helped them remember what life could have been like? You guys.
the way to victory. I'm pointing the way towards the Grey House. The home of the new government. Pointing the way towards what life was like before. And notice what I'm carrying, Joel. <laughs> yeah, is that your M14? or? It's, yeah, my M14. <laughs> I'm carrying my actual M14 that I carried through most of the main campaign. And my beard's there, too. You got the knee guards? <laughs> the concrete casting is a bit rough. But yeah, a statue honoring General Dave's accomplishments so that no one will ever forget. Ever <laughs> forget. Special thanks to Judah, who helped to design the statue and sent it to me almost entirely complete. All I had to do was get my pose correct, add my rifle, a little bit of texturing, and uh, the immersion was complete. So uh, <laughs> thank you to him for making that possible. That was awesome just to get an email like, hey, you want a statue of yourself? <laughs> <laughs> you you can't even understand the amount of like saluting Dave was doing there. Yes! <laughs> my salute was so real, it cracked. <laughs> the air snapped. <laughs> <laughs> General Dave, he reminded us of the world before. And will continue to remind us. And for remind, all eternity. And remind. <laughs> and remind, and and remind. remind. <laughs> Let's go over here. Where General Dave is bringing something else back from before the war. <laughs> I also laugh that you mentioned the lemonade stand. Because this... <laughs> <laughs> There's a Nuka World stand here on the courtyard for refreshments. And I'm like, it's not operating right now. Like, did their license expire? I wonder. Could that be the lore? <laughs> maybe. <laughs> and by maybe, yes, yes it was. <laughs> this is actually the product of me thinking about what General Dave might want to actually rebuild here in Sanctuary as the years went by. And I got to thinking, like, there aren't many pre-war religions in the Apocalypse. But ghouls and General Dave remember what was here before. And Boston has a huge Catholic population. Isn't that the logo for the... The railroad. Yeah, that's cool. Are they help running that? Yes, they actually are helping with quite a few things here. So this is the Church of All Faiths. Because General Dave understands that uh, there's a lot of weird beliefs out there now in the apocalypse. <laughs> the ghouls. <laughs> yeah. Those are the atomic people. Yeah, children of Adam. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Got the railroad logo. Where's that church model from? Nah. It's it's built piece by piece. Wait, you built this? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I, I wanted a very right. small, like almost uh, like frontier looking church because I wanted this to be a building that was actually built by the Pennant Men. So we have a lot of buildings here that were found, but stuff like the lodge and the church were actually built piece by piece by the Pennant Men. So that's why I wanted to use the smaller pieces. General Dave has created the Church of All Faiths, but with a cross on top because it's a church and that's what he knows. That, that's uh... Potter's Field Cemetery, lest we forget. This the is <laughs> the expanded version of the original graveyard, which is a lot more full than it was uh, back in the day. It used to actually be behind this house in the original build. Gosh, just seeing your build, Dave, like, if I could explore this on my own, and I didn't know you necessarily made it, yeah. like, I would be looking at all these details, just like, well, who's who died here? Because I'm like, it's so... Well, you know, you know what I think you do really well? I mean, obviously, you've gotten so much better, even from the start, of course. Oh, yeah, You've done yeah. so much more. Is you have a lot of space. Like, even those little those uh, picnic tables right there. Yeah, yeah. That's really cool. Oh, that, that connects very well to the church, you know, like that. There's always a little, you know, area. It's for the orphanage, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Snack tables. Yeah. <laughs> I thought of this. <laughs> <laughs> but I love how it's like open and each area kind of invites you to explore it, but it's not so condensed that it's like hard, to, like you forget where you are. You always have good key areas. Like thanks. the big, you know, like obviously, because I mean, this big tree was there in the other game. You notice it's now alive yeah. thanks to our scientific And Sanctuary is probably one of the most interesting areas I, I enjoyed actually in Fallout. Yeah, before, yeah, for sure. Because it was the first area, but it was also like, I don't know, it was just big. Oh, yeah. yeah, I'm just like, oh, I keep on seeing things. I'm like, oh, because I saw the statue earlier, and I was like, I want to go read what it says, you know. I, like, never read any sanctuary or like, any, like, cemetery things at all. I could care less because they're just placed wherever, and I'm like, eh. I can't tell there's a story. This, I'm like, ooh, what, ha what happened here? What happened here? Yeah, so some of those gravestones are going to be from the original Minutemen before the walls went up in the original build, even. Dude, I want a TV show of this, like... Just the whole idea of, like, the rebuilding stuff, but then oh, having, yeah. like, a secret, you know, like, what's really going on without zombies I think would be cool this is the church of all faiths <laughs> this is great which also has <laughs> who's that guy I don't know some random preacher okay. know, <laughs> very distinguished yeah, yeah, preacher. Yeah, yeah. 
for the slums outside, we have a food drive going on where those who are well off can donate their food and supplies for the uh, those in need. Yeah. Outside the walls. <laughs> and then we have our another sport running at a brisk 13 <laughs> FPS. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's like certain directions. Oh, it's just like a, is that a ghoul? <laughs> and so as we go up here, again, General Dave's always thinking about how things are heated. We have our, our stove for the um, for the church. The orphanage had a fireplace. Just pass right over it. Whatever. It's there. You know it's there. <laughs> it's there. You know it's there. Some of the symbols and the banners are from other, uh, I guess you could call them charitable organizations from previous Fallout games that... We're doing things like hanging out medicine and stuff. Some of their actual symbols and the banners here. But yeah, up front, we have a ghoul who is practicing. They're uh, they're preaching. Farming's as honest Ready to give as a speech. Oh, is it, that's the that's the Bible verse from Fallout Three, isn't it? And on the painting. Yeah. I am Alpha and Omega, so that's Revelation twenty one yeah. six. And Joel, what does every classic church need? At least, I guess, Protestant churches, it would be not yeah. not only Catholic, but a baptismal. Yeah, nice. Tucked right behind the podium. so rusty. <laughs> yeah, it's like a little bathtub. <laughs> you got our nice, nice gates there. Another day. I don't think she's work. armed. It never No, no, I was checking to see if, like, underneath the, um, like, <laughs> the... No, I like, actually... Like, it was like a pistol. <laughs> I put an actual Bible down there. Oh, that's awesome. There's yeah. always a gun in the podium, walking dead, everything. But here in a sanctuary, we're rebuilding... So we have an actual Bible. I feel like you have to be careful with all those guys with the um the that worship like the atomic stuff. Like guys, come on, stop protect, take your uh, radiation outside. <laughs> we'll allow you in, but come on, everyone's getting irradiated. They are banned from sanctuary. Because <laughs> they're they're too bit, irradiated. They're irradiated. They're also fanatical. So this is the Church of All Faiths, except for the children of Adam because they're nuts <laughs> and dangerous. Use them as candles. They're just like irradiated so bright. That lighting. <laughs> Right there, that uh, said, uh, pleases me. Oh, okay. The peace sign, yeah. <laughs> no nuke sign. But uh, I also got the baby carriage parked in the back for the service. It's literally like a little car, like it's literally parked. <laughs> <laughs> There's also some storage area up here, along the rafters and the spotlight. Oh, the no nuke. Uh, yeah, okay. that's cool. Spotlight right nice there touch. for the uh, for the painting. Because all baptismals have to have, like, a giant lake painting, you know? I, I just figured that light was just coming from nowhere. Oh, of course I should have known. It, it has a support <laughs> bowl and a fan to keep the air circulating in here, which I used a um an ashtray to make, like, a little connection. Oh, really? For the fan. Yeah, right, uh, right there. Oh. It, it actually fit perfectly. Um, Up here is where you got some storage, some of the pre-war holy books we've managed to restore, some paint for the church. Just some reading material and stuff Everyone's like got that. a lot of yellow paint, but I don't see yellow paint anywhere. <laughs> yeah, we have lots of extra. Yeah, it's got tons of extra yellow paint. Someone's dabbling in that. Got some storage up here in the rafters. But uh, also got our our bell in the clock oh, tower. Oh, that's cool. So what is you, that? Is it an actual bell? Yeah, it's an actual bell from, uh, I think, one of the ships or something. Oh. I hung it with a chain from the, from the rooftop. And you can look. I have a railing right here. Look down the orphanarium. Uh, make sure the kids are safe. And in case of an attack, you can ring the bell in case of an emergency. <laughs> Look at all those little kids. They're going to be great as deacons one day. <laughs> oh, just, oh. just because they're banned doesn't mean they're not still trying to impose their views. A secret church of the children of Adam has been meeting up here. We're going to have to figure out which one of them it is. Probably easier to figure out once the cancer sets in. Yeah, it's like, uh, yeah, you line everyone, like, who's the sickest? Yeah, you're, you're probably one of them. Yeah. Yeah, if you're looking like a ghoul, then you're probably that guy. And that, guys, is where we're going to have to stop for today. There's just too much more to see, so stay tuned for the next part, part three, which is going to be next week. For now, thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you then.